Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna go through my thought process while we solve a couple puzzles. Now the puzzles I chose are rated somewhere between 1600 to 2000. So they're not that difficult, but they're definitely not too easy. They're still in that nice challenging zone. Let's start right away with this one. The first thing I notice here is the White King's position and how exposed it is. Now the only thing covering the White King is this little pawn on A2. So if we can get rid of that, the White King is going to be completely exposed. This is why I'm thinking of sacrificing the Rook for the first move. Because after White takes, we can bring the other Rook into the action. The King is going to be forced to move to the B file and we'll be able to play Queen to B4. Now with that last move, Black is also restricting white from escaping over here through the d-file. You see how queen controls those squares and the pawn is controlling d3? Now after that, I'm sure we'll find a mate pretty easily. Yep, as I said, the king's only move was to c1 and queen to b2 is then mate. On to the next puzzle. Okay, so here, we have an endgame puzzle. It's white's turn to move and checkmate in two. I don't think I need to explain this all that much because the most natural move in this position is definitely queen to f3. Black's only legal move is then king to h4, and this might be the tricky part, so to speak. What would you play here as white? I kind of hope you said queen to f4, because if you said queen to h3, you'd allow black to escape right over here on g5, but by moving queen to h4, black is not going to have any escape left. As you can see. Alright, now on to the third puzzle. It is another puzzle that's pretty close to the end game. It looks like black is proposing a rook trade. Should we accept this? Hmm. Well, first things first, I see that white definitely has a back rank problem. We really need to keep that in mind, so let's see what options we have here. Like I said, the first thing we can really see is the rook trade, but what are we going to play after that? Now we should either play pawn to h3 to deal with a checkmate threat, or we should check the king. Now another problem white has is the c6 pawn. If black could force a queen trade, white would have a very hard time trying to stop that pawn. Black could use principle of two weaknesses to promote one of his pawns. Now as the name suggests, the principle of two weaknesses is all about creating two threats at the same time. It overwhelms your opponent and it forces them to make a choice where either way you come out on top. Now in our example, if the queen weren't on the board, black could sacrifice his c pawn to promote the g pawn. Okay, so most likely the rook trade isn't the correct answer. Now let's see if we have something better. The other thing that catches my eye is the queen check on e5. The reason I'm looking at that move is that I'm trying to bring the king to the edge of the board where I can surely force a checkmate. Now if, after queen to e5, black decides to move to the b-file, I have rook to b1. Or if he goes to the a-file, then queen to a1 is checkmate. But the problem here is that after queen to e5, black could go right here to c4, and white doesn't really have any clear continuation after that. White could continue with queen checks or trade rooks, but I really don't think this is the solution. No, the correct answer here is to take advantage of the king and the rook's positioning. Now, look at the board and let's see if there are any moves that could take advantage of that position. The winning move ends up being queen to f2, forking the rook and the king. The black rook can't take the queen because it's pinned by our rook, so the king is forced to move. After that, white needs to take the rook with their queen because of the checkmate threats, and this way, white will be up one rook. Okay, this next one is a pretty standard checkmate pattern. It's a variation of the opera mate. Now even though black is down quite a bit of material, he can force a checkmate in only three moves. Again, we're going to take advantage of the very exposed king. And our first mission here should be to restrict him to the first rank. We can see that his only escape square at the moment is b2, but if we play bishop to a3, we can take away that square. And after that, rook to d1 and rook to c1 would be a checkmate. 
because the rook is going to be protected by our bishop. All right, moving on to another one. Here, we see that we can trade the queens and maybe one set of rooks. We can also see that we can take this pawn. But is any of this really going to improve white's chances of winning? Now, if you capture the pawn with your pawn, you're going to leave your knight undefended. And if you take it with the queen, white can play pawn to f3. You take the queen, white takes your queen. And after all the trades, white would end up being worse off. Inspired by our previous puzzles, let's take a look at the king's position now. We see once more that he has an open file where the queen can do quite a bit of damage. Also, our knight is providing excellent support over the f2 and h2 squares, and we could take advantage of that to force a checkmate. Now, are you able to see how black can force a checkmate here? It all starts with queen to f2, white is forced to h1. Queen to h4, taking advantage of the open file, and white is forced to g2. Queen next will move to h2, forcing white to f1, and then h1 is checkmate. Because white can escape to f2, since that square is guarded by the knight. Okay. Now, let's see one more puzzle, where the king is once again very, very exposed. I think today's puzzles kind of focus solely on checkmating. So how do we approach this one? Your first thought might be queen to e3 or queen to d4, but both those squares are pretty guarded by white. The e3 square by the knight and d4 by the queen. The only other check available is queen to g3, which if you look closely is actually checkmate. White can't go to b4 because of our king, and there's no way to interfere with the check. Okay, we gotta do one more, because that last one was just way too easy. This time, we've got white to move and escape the check. Now, I think the only viable options right now are c2 and e2, but I got a gut feeling that e2 should be the answer. After we move there, black could take the d pawn or the b pawn. To solve this puzzle, we really gotta see what threats white has, and we gotta figure out how to take advantage of them. So, the most dangerous piece is the e7 pawn, which is one square away from promoting. White has a rook on the c-file, so maybe we can use it to force the promotion. And now that I'm looking closely, I can see that white can create a bigger threat if he brings his rook to f8. So, after the white king moves, his plan can be to move the rook to f1 and then to f8. Because f8 is also pretty protected by the bishop. White can promote with a checkmate. Now, if you're able to look ahead and see that threat, you can be sure that your opponent saw it too. So most likely, after you move to e2, he's going to take that d-pawn and the bishop afterward. Now, white won't have two defenders over the f8 square, so he can't promote anymore. To win, we've got to solve this line. So as we've calculated so far, we have king to e2, rook to d4, rook to f1, rook takes bishop, and pawn takes rook. And it's black's move. The problem for white is that he can't bring the rook to f8 on our turn because it's simply going to get taken. And the black king can't stop the d-pawn from promoting. Also, we can't push the d-pawn because that would leave the e-pawn completely undefended and black would take it with a check. After we move, he can capture our pawn as well. So, is king to e2 the wrong move? And should we have played king to c2 instead? Actually, no. Our feeling and calculations were right, but we rushed a little at the end there. Instead of bringing the rook to f8, white can play this elegant king move to the d-file. If he wants to push the d-pawn to promote, but first, he's got to get away from any possible checks. Also, his rook on f1 cuts off the king's access, so black can't bring his king to stop the promotion. Now, let's see if our calculation was right. Oh! He doesn't even take our bishop. He goes straight for the pawn. Now in this scenario, we just take it, and black has to push his pawn if he doesn't want to be checkmated on f8. So, yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. I just love showing you guys different puzzles because you can never not learn from a puzzle. That's its entire goal. So keep practicing on puzzles, end games, mid games, openings, everything. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what you'd like to see in our future content. See you next time.